the Industrial Revolution changed the world forever. Every innovation brings huge changes to many lives. China has long been renowned for manufacturing capabilities, but at the end of the 20th century, made in China became a worldwide phenomenon. Today, another industrial revolution is being planned for China's future. We live in a world of glass. Today, glass is everywhere we look, on our smartphones, TVs, and computers. It is the favorite material for information display. But this is no ordinary glass. It is a precision-engineered, high-end product. As thin as two sheets of A4 paper, it looks like a plastic membrane and is able to withstand shaking and bending. Only when it shatters will people realize that it is ultra-thin glass. The smelter contains molten glass at a temperature of 1,600 degrees Celsius. The molten glass is compressed in the roller to become thinner and thinner. Seven years ago, Ren Hongzhan's employers decided to shut down their outdated production facilities and to develop ultra-thin, high-end glass, which is just 0.15 millimeters thick. For many years, China lacked the ability to produce high-quality glass. However, there was a huge surplus of low-quality production facilities, which operated to full capacity would generate an annual loss of 6.2 billion yuan. China's domestic electronics manufacturers were forced to buy imported high quality to maintain their production, which squeezed their profits and made their products more expensive. Run Hongzhan's team is leading the way to break this deadlock. This molten glass will set naturally to a thickness of around 6 millimeters. Ordinary manufacturing techniques can only reduce this by about two-thirds. Once this limit is reached, it is a huge challenge to make the glass thinner by even one hundredth of a millimeter. The first obstacle is in material formulation. To make glass thinner, researchers need to add metallic oxides to increase the ductility of the molten glass. But too much additive makes the product fragile. What is the right amount? Researchers have to repeatedly use trial and error to find out. 通常一天，我们也就是只能做一到两组这样的尝试。完了之后，一年左右的时间，我们才能够拿到嗯相对比较可靠的一些数据。The materials problem is solved, but production failure is still high. Due to the uneven heat, the molten glass on the same horizontal line has different temperatures. 
This makes the molding difficult and an inability to a stable production volume. Run Hongzan realizes that they need to find a more sophisticated processing technique. Forty pairs of electric heating rods are installed along the production bed, allowing precise temperature control of the molten glass as it cools gradually. At the correct temperature, it can be rolled thinner. Since 2011, the limits as to how thin the glass can be rolled have been broken, time and time again. Starting at 2 mm, the thickness of the glass was first reduced to 0.55 mm, then to 0.28 mm, finally reaching 0.15 mm after five years' work. Over 20 production lines were established soon afterwards, which saved the downstream industries 86 billion yuan per annum. Today, Chinese consumers can buy an LCD TV for 3,000 yuan. In the past, it would have cost more than 10,000 yuan. Smartphones that once cost 6,000 yuan can now be bought for 2,000. The market is the proof of China's success in this field. The whole of China's manufacturing industry is seeking to move on from competing on price to competing on quality, and the future is in the hands of those who hold the core technologies. At 86 meters long, this is the longest truck-mounted concrete pump in the world. It's made by a privately owned Chinese company. Since 2007, it has broken records with its 66 meter, 72 meter, and finally 86 meter concrete pumping arms. By transferring cement to a precise location through a multi-section arm, it represents the high end of future engineering and construction. Xiang Wenbo's career ran in parallel with the Chinese economy. Time came when there was a critical turning point. In the 1990s, truck-mounted concrete pump technology was the preserve of foreign companies. The multi-section extendable arms are the key. They need to extend for tens of meters under huge pressure during the pumping operation. The steel plate used to make the arms has to have a higher tensile strength than 600 megapascals. In the 1990s, only foreign steel mills could provide this kind of material. To match this, the company developed a technique to improve the strength of domestic steel plate. Sani's new steel plate has a tensile strength of 1,000 megapascals. That's equivalent to the pressure exerted by the weight of an elephant on an area the size of a fingernail. In 2011, their new technology was put to the test. 
after the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan was damaged by the tsunami. The reactors needed to be sealed and cooled down with water. But there was no equipment available in Japan that could reach the height of the reactor. Sani Heavy Industry received the request for help. They sent a 62-meter truck-mounted concrete pump to the site. The Chinese brand rose to its moment in the sun. It became involved in more and more projects and took a bigger share in the market globally. Nobody foresaw what was coming next. In 2012, a global economic downturn sent China's engineering machinery industry into shock. The sales of concrete machinery crashed from 30 billion yuan a year to just 10 billion. What saved Sani was not switching to another industry, but to develop more competitive products from its core technology. We Research and development meetings are held regularly. Although the business is doing well, Xiang Wenbo never relaxes his vigilance. In the fast-changing world, no one can predict what the next challenge will be. Having gone through many ups and downs, Chinese entrepreneurs have learned that core technology is the key to success. Chinese businesses like Sani have expanded around the world. Shipping, bridge building, and the nuclear power industries all carry the Made in China brand. High-speed train travel is an area in which China has now taken a world-leading position. But that's not the end of the line. In Chengdu, engineers are working on the future of rail travel, the maglev. This is the state key laboratory of traction power at Southwest Jiaotong University. Deng Zigang has built a toy, which took over six months and cost hundreds of thousands of yuan. It is to demonstrate how the high-temperature superconducting maglev of the future will work. The basic principle of maglev, magnetic levitation, is very simple. Two like magnetic poles repel each other. The maglev train therefore floats above its track, with the force of friction reduced to zero. Theoretically, it could travel at a flying speed of over 500 kilometers per hour. That is the dream. In practice, things are more complicated. Shanghai has been running the first commercial high-speed maglev line in the world for 15 years. But the future of maglev depends on an entirely new breakthrough from the old German technology. Filled with the liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius, the model vehicle is made of superconducting material that allows it to travel the magnetic rail without external power. At the same time, it enjoys stabilized suspension above or below the track.
就整个悬浮，我们不需要通电。那大家也看到，我们只需要在里面注入我们的液氮。未来的话，我们投入应用的高温特的实验，我们列车的原理和我们莫比夫斯泰这个小模型是完全一模一样的。But Deng Zugang wants to go further. He has added vacuum pipes to the project to test whether the new maglev could run inside them to reduce atmospheric drag. We have these two techniques, the Zugang pipe and the Zugang pipe, combined together, we find that it is one plus one equals three. This is a relationship. Deng Zugang's target speed is 1,000 kilometers per hour. He knows that his peers in other countries are also striving to be the first to achieve this. Like Japan, they are doing the Zugang Pipe Express Rail Service Line Transport. They are becoming the Zugang Pipe Express Rail Service Line Transport. America is doing the Super Speed Rail. That speed is measured at 1,000 km/h. Deng believes that pursuit of technological innovation is the surest way to put China on track to lead in building the rail networks of the future. Shanghai's Pudong Airport, the afternoon of May 5, 2017. The passengers are unaware that a historic moment is about to take place on the nearby runway. The C919, the first large passenger aircraft made in China, has been cleared for takeoff. It's a dream many years in the making. The high-tech manufacturing, especially for the aircraft industry, has always been a weakness for China. Without a large passenger aircraft manufacturing capability, China spends millions of dollars more per aircraft than countries which have the capability. It means that China will spend extra $120 billion over the next two decades. C919 is not China's first attempt. In 1970, a project was started to build a large passenger jetliner, the Shanghai Y10. Meng Jianxin was involved in the project. Six years after its successful test flight, the project was closed down. But Meng and his colleagues never gave up the dream. Twenty years on, they started again. But this time they had their doubters. The first target for the percentage of homemade materials was set cautiously at 10%. Aircraft manufacturing for large passenger planes is extremely sophisticated and quite unlike any other industry. The structure of large aircraft has 10 main parts, each with over 10 systems and hundreds of thousands of components. Undercarriage makes up less than 0.2% of the whole aircraft, but is composed of 180 large components and 13 major systems, including hydraulic, controlling, electrical, and shock absorbent systems. It takes a team of six people working for more than eight hours to install it. The complex design structure is wholly Chinese. However, to promote the large aircraft around the world, each component must meet international safety standards, which means airworthiness certification from the civil aviation authorities in Europe and America. Meng Jianxin is testing a new cutting disc. 
It uses a diamond blade to cut a new type of carbon fiber. This composite material is both very light and very strong. China has achieved a breakthrough in large-scale carbon fiber molding to apply this material to the wings of the C919. Every little change has an impact on the whole picture. During the manufacturing process for large aircraft, people have to continuously update many elements. After 10 years, the percentage of homemade materials used on the aircraft has surpassed the original 10% target. Thanks to the rapid growth of China's aviation industry, the aircraft is now 50% comprised of homemade materials. After the successful test flight on May 5th, by October 2017, there were 730 orders for the aircraft from 24 customers worldwide. China had finally edged into a market monopolized for many years by so few players. It's a success that drove 242 suppliers, upstream and downstream of the industry, to realize their own technical breakthroughs. For Chinese aircraft manufacturing, this is just the beginning. The turbofan jet aero engine is one of the most complicated machines ever made. The civil aviation market for these engines is dominated by companies from the United States and the United Kingdom. China has the potential to become a third major supplier of engines for passenger airlines. To this end, Chinese scientists are working on making the world's most efficient turbine blade. It's happening in this humdrum-looking lab. Yang Rui is confirming the timeline for their next project with his team. In 2018, they are due to deliver a batch of low-pressure turbine blades to one of the world's big three manufacturers, the UK's Rolls-Royce. In 2016, the titanium aluminum alloy is the future of jet engine fan blades. It has the same strength and reliability as the currently used nickel-based alloy, but only half the density. This super alloy gives the engine a 20% increase in fuel efficiency. As a result, all engine manufacturers are looking to use it, Rolls-Royce included. To reduce costs, Rolls-Royce wanted the blades molded in one piece. This posed an additional problem to Professor Young and his team. A further problem is that yttrium oxide has a powdery texture, 
that could crumble and contaminate the alloy in the molding process. A German scientist using computer simulation concluded that it would be impossible to make a 20-centimeter fan blade in one piece using this material. But Yang Rei's team were skeptical about the Germans' methodology. Yang Rui decided he had to give it a go. He organized a team of experts in different fields. It took these scientists from different specialisms 10 years to produce a special adhesive that could prevent the yttrium oxide from powdering. The problem of the molding was finally solved. Interdisciplinary cooperation had produced the first one-piece molded titanium-aluminum turbine blade in the world. Rolls-Royce will use the blades in the world's most efficient aircraft engine. Yang Rui believes that it is only a matter of time before they will be used for China-made engines as well. Dashu is a jewelry designer. He has designed over 500 pieces, but is still troubled by one seemingly simple problem. Dashu's problem shouldn't be a big deal. Precision machine tools should be able to let him realize his designs to his standards of perfection. Zhang Wenjia is a machine tool engineer specializing in machine tools for the jewelry industry. High-tech machine tools are the mother tools of the manufacturing industry. Only a few developed countries have mastered the core technology. The intellectual property rights behind this technology are closely guarded commercial secrets. Advanced machine tools can be used to produce components for anything, from trains or jet aircraft to smartphones and watches. The 5-axis machine tool is literally the cutting edge of the industry. Zhang Wenjia's colleague Huang Yunying and his team want to develop a high-tech cutting machine of their own. Ultimately, it all comes down to the software that controls the machine. It is this software, built on decades of research and development, that forms the most jealously kept secrets. Can Huang Yunning's team find another way? Software technology has developed at an exponential pace in recent decades. 
Huang's team decide to take the bull by the horns and develop their own 5-axis digital control system on a brand new platform. It was a bold but daunting prospect. After repeated efforts from 2008 to 2010, Huang Yunying's team finally succeeded in making the basic platform for the control system. Over the following five years, they continually refined it until in 2015, they had the first Chinese-designed 5-axis machine tool. It was the 1,917th iteration of the software. The accuracy of its precision control tolerances is down to within 3 micrometers, roughly one-fifth of a human hair. It was a revolutionary moment for Zhang Wenjia, too. The arrival of the new 5-axis machine tool made the jewelry machine tool he was working on a real possibility. After making the necessary adjustments, the performance of this jewelry machine tool is impressive. It can engrave complex Chinese characters on the shell of an egg, less than one-third of a millimeter thick. The new machine tool is the answer to jewelry designer Dashu's prayers. After programming and debugging, it carves him a pair of perfect symmetrical rounded corners. Advanced manufacturing industry keeps surprising us with changes. Construction, an industry that used to absorb so much economic capacity, is starting to adopt the new manufacturing methods. Han Xueshi is a project manager for a building company. This is his eighth construction project. People who are used to the traditional way of building may find it hard to believe their eyes. Traditionally, all building work is done on the construction site. This can be both wasteful and polluting. New methods of building using prefabricated modules borrow the techniques of the manufacturing industry. Every component of the house is produced on an assembly line to a preset specification. It means there is very little wastage of materials. The demand for water and electricity at the construction site are also reduced enormously. Building can be assembled with electric drills and welding machines. But is it safe to build this way? Professor Liu Li Ping from Chongqing University has been researching the issue in relation to seismic shocks. The energy released by a magnitude 8 earthquake is equal to 15 million tons of TNT. Can this new type of modular building handle it? Okay. 
在这种情况下呢，它实际上是一个强体的抵抗地震作用效果，在我们这次实验里面，抗震性能表现还是比较好的。The Luca Primary School will be completed in one month. The project will save 20 tons of steel, 27.8 tons of coal, and 240 tons of cement. These numbers may look modest, but as China plans to use prefabricated modules in 30% of all new buildings over the next decade, the effect will be huge. It should save 12% of the current consumption in the global construction industry. In a rapidly changing era, the global industrial landscape is reshuffled. The revolution brought about by bringing together the Internet with AI offers infinite possibilities. There are more kids than usual visiting the Shenyang Industrial Museum. 当时是亚洲地区最大的一个铸造企业，鼎盛时期呢，生产铸件上万种。Shenyang used to have the most advanced equipment manufacturing industry in China. The busy production here used to be the epitome of heavy industry. Now this is but a distant memory. Nevertheless, they are always opportunities. After the announcement of the government's Made in China 2025 strategy, Shenyang has become the testbed for overhaul and reform. It still has the residue of its industrial base and human capital. Where will it go from here? 你好，机器人。你好。你叫什么名字？我的名字叫小星。你喜欢什么颜色？蓝色，那是天空与大海的颜色。Not far from the industrial museum is a robotic center. Robots of different types can accompany kids, take care of the old, welcome customers, and manage smart home appliances. Sun Rohui is testing the most flexible mechanical arm in the world. His sensation should be from the hand's movement. Our hands and fingers can be the most advanced in the world. Sun Rohui has been working on the hand as the most flexible of human tools. It is the real mother of all tools. Manufacturers dream that industrial robots could have the same characteristics so that the whole production process becomes more flexible and more intelligent. The robot arm with seven degrees of freedom can fulfill the requirements for all kinds of production. But more important matters challenge the engineers to add a new function. If we attempt to change the situation outside, the machine will be able to feel the change. It will know that someone has touched me, it will stop. To ensure the safety of the human being. Look, I only need to touch my hand a little bit, it will stop. This is not possible in the traditional way. Instead of using the traditional sensor, Sun Rohui has created a special method to realize the function. Every time the external force hits the robot, it triggers a voltaic change and the robot stops. 
that this type of flexible robot can work closely and safely with humans makes a new type of manufacturing possible. There are different robots adapted for different scenarios. They can even be smarter than their human masters, and they never tire. At the Yangshan port in Shanghai, automated guided vehicle robots are transporting containers. They are like veteran operators who can maintain their accuracy to within one centimeter. In Shenyang, the intelligent warehouse manages goods efficiently. Humans need to do little more than push a button. Cleaning robots in a fab, a semiconductor fabrication plant, are far more efficient than any human could be. Indeed, modern chip manufacture would not be possible without them. Another major change the internet is bringing about is industrial customization. Purchasers will be able to specify their own particular taste or needs to the manufacturer. One simple example are these air conditioner units. Any color you like, as long as it is black, is no longer the rule. Factory labor is increasingly becoming the province of intelligent machines. Where does this leave humans, many ask. One answer is that customized manufacturing will influence even our very physical beings. Our joints are among the most vital and vulnerable parts of the body. Loss of function in joint, like the ankle, is deeply debilitating. Tang Kang Lai is an orthopedic surgeon. In case of necrosis of the talus or ankle bone, amputation and transplant are the only options. There was no satisfactory replacement in the past. This bone looks mundane, but has a very complex shape. There are many curves on a surface of less than four square centimeters, and the smallest groove is only two millimeters deep. It is the result of millions of years of human evolution. An artificial talus made with the most sophisticated methods can only bear load. It will have no mobility at all. A revolutionary form of manufacturing, 3D printing, is going to change patients' lives. The traditional way of making objects is to carve them down from a solid substrate, like carving wood. The new method of 3D printing involves growing the object, gradually building it up from a scanned model. First, a CT scan of the patient's talus bone is turned in a 3D computer model. They then print out a PVC model version for the surgical team to use in planning the operation. Lastly comes the printing of the actual artificial talus. Titanium alloy powder is spread evenly in a molding bed. Then an electron beam sweeps over the powder, releasing precise amounts of energy in accordance with the computer model.
the heated powder alloy coagulates in the designated pattern. After nine hours, the customized artificial talus has set. A blast of air clears the excess powder to reveal the new object. Seven days later, Tang Kang Lai transplants the artificial talus to the patient's foot. It is the world's first implantation of a 3D printed talus bone. Six months later, the patient's ankle is recovering and starting to function normally. Three D printing halves the time it takes to produce the replacement bone, compared to the traditional method, down to two weeks. And it reduces the costs of manufacture, even dramatically, at less than fifteen percent of the old cost. People are expecting much more from three D printing. In the future. Artificial body parts made using bioprinting technology may take place of many organ transplants. Integrated precision molded components and microcosmic objects made with nanoscale printing will overturn people's ideas of manufacturing. Over the past decade, Chinese manufacturers have continually sought out new possibilities. Made in China once meant high volume, low cost production. It is becoming a case of created in China as high-tech, high-value production becomes the order of the day. What will manufacturing look like in the future? Will it evolve around specialized materials with specialized functions? Will it be omnipresent intelligent machines in control? Will it prioritize efficiency and energy saving? Probably all of these, in some way or another. The only certainties are that we are entering a period of continuous industrial revolution, and that China is set to be at its cutting edge.